There are thousands of airports connecting cities, cross countries and continents, yet with just three letters from Ake and Betuyes and Zoo, both me, you and our bags root round the world as unambiguously as practically possible. Airport codes. If you fly, you know them as part of the planning on your tickets, trackers and tags, and even as part of the port itself as big, big branding. It's impossible not to wander board on a long haul with only in-flight entertainment about potential patterns peeking through, like all the Canadian e airports. Why Canada? And why everyone? How do all these codes code? Well, Labor, to find the answer we need to divert this flight to Yule, the Canadian city that's capital of codes, Montreal, where is headquartered Yeta the International Air Transport Association. It's not a governmental organization, more an independent aviation agency for airlines, where they work to make airports and airplanes increasingly interoperable, using humanity's most exciting and powerful yet oft maligned as dual tool standards, one of which is the IATA Airport Code, three letters to identify every airport in the world from the most connected to the least. All air-coded SO companies can communicate clearly and concisely complicated connections to carry their customers and their bags. And actually, the code IETA created is to only four airports. Rather technically, it's a location code for all kinds of transportation interchanges, like plane stations that connect to train stations such as Amsterdam Schiphol, which is just so intermodally epic. Okay, let's try not to get distracted by efficient infrastructure. Easier said than done. Here's how the IETA code is supposed to work. One airport on code, which is unique because airport names are not. Booking passage to Portland. Cool, that could be Oregon or Maine or Victoria. Australia. Ambiguity is the enemy. International flying creates communication connections between every language on Earth. So the IETA code helps when you don to speak Greenlandic or Odia, but still need to book a flight to Kandralusik via Bainswar. I'm so sorry, Greenland and India. Instead of Mongoling pronunciation, it's just SV. Much clearer, not just for you, but also for the ground crew getting the bags through. Ideally, the IATA code comes from the first three letters of the location, like with Gibraltar, where Gibraltar Airport is given jib. Give Gibraltar. So going to Cork. It all be Cor, Cor, Ireland. Oh, that didn't work. Seems Cordoba, Argentina built their airport first and got Cor ahead of Cork. So, oh, Ork for Cork. Tufnuji Sork, Germany. That's an adorable town name you V got there, but you re going to need to pick something else for your code. Thus, a single code collision kicks off a consistency cascade as airports compete for clear codes. So if your local airport has an odd three letters, there's probably a rival port that picked previously. This is one of the major things IETA does. Coordinate everyone's code preferences, which means dealing with not just individual airports, but all the aviation agencies in different countries some with their own desires for intra-country code consistency, such as Canada, who clearly claimed all the E. We are, we 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 we
Thus picking Aeon at random. At least you know, Rolly, where you were going to go. Whoops. No, that didn't work. Ikum brought us to Washington, Yusa, and since we re here, we might as well talk about the FE. In America, the Federal Aviation Administration, daughter of the Department of Transportation, is given the job of assigning all American airports an American airport code. Yes. The FAA actually has her own set of three-letter codes, but we re not going to talk about it, because it means in America there's own airport, two codes, and for simplicity, I'm sticking to this story. One airport, one code. Right. Right. Now, FAA has letters she'd really rather American airports not. Please no one, oh, or ye, is reserved for the Navy. For om, um, is it aircraft carriers? No, they use an unrelated and additional system that we re also not going to talk about. The Navy is given to Navy bases with airports. So American airports, like Nashville, that seem like they should start with the letter, were encouraged to pick something else, like for Banishville. There is also a for the Army and the Air Force, although not all the us, so there's a bunch of airports, like Albuquerque, Aberdeen, Anchorage, Amarillo, and Augusta. Next, FAA once avoided because of checks, notes, Morse code. Whoa, really? There, a set of three-letter international Morse codes that begin with for quickie communications that are still used. I use. So, because of 1800s telegraph slang, American airports shouldn't start with the letter co next, kind of FAA advises against, because EFTS, the Federal Communications Commission, daughter of no one, she see, independent agency, assigns, and for the civilian broadcast stations. So, that thing where, on the radio, they say, Kmad Action News, or Dull Public Airwaves. Yeah, they all start with Akor, which is actually location information. Peace, air in the west, and voice in the east, except for the middle where it's both. PC, why did you do it the way? Well, since you coded those codes first, Discourages letter prompt start at Thursday. Thursday to start at
even though broadcast codes air four letters, not three, and they reunite no radio stations, not airports, and definitely not weather stations. And the D. The U. So the weather there. Of course they re not weather stations. Why would you even say that? No reason. It want to come up later, don't worry. Moving on, so there's a reserve for air route traffic control centers themselves. And why no why? Because Canada, of course. Yes, I understand. That's not an explanation. We'll get to it later. That's America's preferences for airport codes. But other countries exist, and their aviation agencies don't care at all which letters the United States avoids. So while Bonnishville was building her big, big branding, NASA grabbed the Puget NAS for the Bahamian capital. There's no shortage of airport codes that start outside the bus with America's reluctant letters. And also, because FAA's precedence errant laws, you can find American exceptions like New Kekwai, Yakwig, and Ziv. Boy, that was fun to say. Let's send the video with more of that, shall we? And that New must particularly burn Newark, New Jersey, who had to go with her work, New Jersey, instead. Right? Finishing this thought, every country and their agencies has their own walkie preferences for letters and wants to ignore every other country's preferences, and hiata job is to coordinate between them. The result of which is, yet airport codes have no satisfying system at all, which is so said for a standard. And the story of one airport, one code, also falls apart even within IATA, because of Miguel codes for megacities. Example, London, which has six international airports, Heathrow, Gatwick City, Luton, Stansted, Southend, Lore, Olgu, Olsi, Oltenna, uh, they all start with uh, no sin, sin. But there's a MIGA code for them all. Long, which you can use while searching for flights landing in London, but don't care where. Even though these airports air ages apart. Lon is the international city, MIGAist, MIGA code, but there's also Moscow. Mao and Stockholm Stowe with four airports each, and more with two or three, like Neck and Bu. And then, Code Wise is the most exceptional airport. Euro Airport, Basel, Mulhouse, Freiburg. An airport so nice. They coded it thrice. Mul de Sol How this happened is, France and Switzerland both wanted an airport here-ish, near the German border, and teamed up. France provided the land, 
Switzerland, the capital of Germany, has nothing to do with this. And the pair co-built the port, constructing duplicate and separate everythings. So it was, effectively, two airports run by two countries, with two runways and two sets of rules, and thus needed two airport codes, depending on which side passengers could connect through, and one mega code if it didn't matter. But all of this doesn't mega matter now, because the two airports mostly act as own anyway, thus own airport, three codes. And there are plans to run a railway through for epic intermodelness, so it could become one airport, four codes, or five codes. I mean, why not at this point? So yeah, an airport isn't uniquely identified by one code, and there's no location information coded in this location code. Not even a checksum letter. What is this? A social security number. Without a checksum, if you were planning a flight to airport in Bangladesh, but typo the incorrect ek, you will end up in Argentina instead. Again, but at least the chance of a switcheroo like that must be pretty small. After all, a three-letter code means 17,000 permutations, way more than the actual number of airports, which is only 40,000 airports worldwide. How can that possibly be true? Well, it's time to introduce you to ECO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, daughter of the United Nations, who also lives in Montreal with Yetta. And it might seem like they read the same, but Yetta actually only covers what we might call the standard commercial airports you'd find searching for flights normally, while ECO covers what she calls aerodromes, which is everything from the world's busiest passenger airport in the always unlikely seeming Atlanta, Georgia down to rarely used runways on ranches in Texas, of which there were an absolutely absurd number. So with all those aerodromes to account for, Echo uses four letters which gives, whoa, a lot more options. Thanks, exponentials. And she also uses the extra space to add location information. Finally, in ICO system, the first letter of an airport code is roughly where on earth it is. Quiz for airports in the Pacific, one letter to cover flying over the most terrifyingly empty half of the earth. One letter to air her over the 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 Try not to think about it as you look down into the endless abyss before arriving at South America. It's then for Middle America and for Continental America. Key sensibly is Canadian America and flying over the pole we get to you for used to be gooser. Yes, that's actually the name. Look, what makes standard standards is their stubbornness. Just because a gigantic country collapsed is no reason to change what millions of flight computers know in their code and pilots in their brains. After ICO's first letter, there's also a bunch of seconds of letters. Well, except for America and Canada, who skipped that, but don't worry. Moving on, as an example, if your airport starts with ANAF, it's in Southern Africa. And if the next letter is A, that's South Africa. And the last two letters air for the airport. So Cape Town gets up for a fact. Of course, there are some exceptions like Antarctica, the continent no one owns, but all the cool kids want to claim. Aerodromes here are supposed to use the code for the country's claim they re in, such as Williams Field, which is American run but uses B because it's in the QE claim. But also lots of Antarctic aerodromes use pseudocodes. No, we re not gonna talk about what that means which start with ought and end with a number like 27 for Troll Airfield serving Troll Research Station, which runs on Troll Time. Norway, is that you? I knew it was. But you really should be using N for Europe Norway. Entry, free. Enter Trolls, 
it's so perfect and yes the twenty seven means there air at least twenty six other runways in antarctica i was surprised too but this along with all of the ranches is how you get to crazy numbers of aerodromes and yes Ico has more exceptions to this system that we are going to skip but i can't resist just one more which is region gem looking at the map you want to be able to find it because jis mars when the rover arrived at jezero crater Ico gave the historic landing location the code Pajero. okay but that's it for exceptions so to sum up the story of an airport all code was just that a story tons of airports have at least two and when they do the call code is what computers and pilots know to plan where the plane needs to go and yeta is what passengers say to get on their way but if a call exists with a more comprehensive code why is yeta at all so it isn't about you it's about your bags at an airport you as a human walk to your connecting flight but your bags below need a lot of logistical assistance before Yeta, there was just like a handwritten tag saying, Please get me where me owner is going, written in potentially every language on earth. So you can imagine how often that went wrong. So Yeta used codes to make life better for bags with bag tags, with big clear codes to get those bags cleanly through connections across countries and companies and the original plan was that train stations with vieta codes would also let you check in your bag there and it would be part of the automatic connection too but that mostly dozed happen now because of logistical difficulties which is the same reason that the vieta code is a club that excludes all the little aerodromes too annoying to attend to so if your bag's final destination after connecting at austin one of the many random rancher strips the ground crew is not going to swap your bags onto that tiny crop duster for you. Ditto if you reconnecting through Argentina to Antarctica, anywhere. Those tiny airports, no Yeta code for you. And without an Yeta code, your bag depends on you to get it all the way through. And that's what Yeta is actually for. That big, big branding you see is for your bags and because of the tag it became what customers know which brings us back to the start and oh sorry canada i know evie been avoiding answering the ways but it's just so much more complicated than expected there's a tale that the ways are an old system for if canadian airports had a weather station e for yes weather station and without and since pilots want to know the weather that explains all the whiz, but also the few oddball Canadian. But investigating the truth of that story took eight months off my life, which I will now give to you as an extremely compressed executive summary. Working backwards, the American and Canadian Yeda codes created in the 1950s come from the last three letters of ICA codes created in the 1940s. The first letter of ICA codes come from the Atu, the International Telecommunications Union's codes created in the 1910s for radio stations, which used for America and C for Canada. Soak and C into four letters and back down to three leaves E for Canada. Here is where you would reasonably ask why C for Canada, but that goes all the way back to telegraphs and beyond. So is a story for another time. But for now, for this video, why for Canada? Because of radio call signs, because of a lot of other things, because of us and Canada coordinating that four flights within North America, it really would be for yes, Canada, mostly. Well, that was a lot of bureaucratic history, so let's finish with the final fun Yeda codes promised from before, starting with Seox City with the sensible looking sucks until you say it out loud but to her creditably owns that branding for airport merch. Good for you, Seox. And there, Salso Beach's International Airport, Summer Break Central. 
their top two picks for codes were picked, so to help the confused collegiates find their connections, the agencies agreed on Ecto Stand for every can party, which is awesome branding, but you'd never know because beaches dozen. Bother. Geez. Ek. You could learn a thing or two from shooks. But now every can party on this round the world flight of Yetta codes entertaining to say out loud. Ready. Boo. Eek. Cow wo poo gag. Bro. But got hot pm. Um mom. Dad mad run. Fun. I'll uf a comal galol.